bears can survive extreme cold. Bar-headed geese can soar high in the thin air above some of Earth's tallest mountains. But what does it take to be able to withstand all five of Earth's mass extinctions? Meet the true master of survival, the tardigrade. Hi, I'm Miranda Cosgrove. Welcome to the STEM loft, where the landlord said it wasn't haunted and was honestly really weird about it. With eight legs, claws, and the ability to hibernate for dozens of years, tardigrades might just be both Earth's most extreme habitants and also some of its cutest. Sorry, dinoflagellates, you've gotta step up your game. The adorableness of tardigrades, also known as water bears, is best seen with a microscope. Almost translucent and usually around half a millimeter in size, they clamor around their surroundings slowly on their stubby legs. They use their little mouth tube to suck needed nutrients from plants and other small organisms. Because of their survival skills, tardigrades are found all over the place. Oceans, lakes, dirt, and probably even moss in your backyard, which is where they get their other incredible nickname, moss piglets. But all tardigrades are not created equal. There are actually more than 1,300 identified species of tardigrades. They have differences in things like their head size, number of claws, and habitat. Despite their tiny size, tardigrades actually have full digestive systems, similar to much larger organisms. Yep, that means these little guys poop. And comparatively, large poops for how small they are. But what's most impressive about some of the species of water bears isn't those big poops. It's their top of the line survival skills. Tardigrades have been around for hundreds of millions of years and survived all five of Earth's mass extinctions. I guess you could call them water bear grills, but I don't even think he'd shrug off the asteroid that ended the dinosaurs. These little creatures can survive in some pretty extreme temperatures, from just above absolute zero, the coldest temperature possible, to more than 149 degrees Celsius. That's 300 degrees Fahrenheit. They're able to deal with intense pressures at the seafloor, long periods without water, high radiation, and the vacuum of space. Now, how do we know about the space thing? Well, a number of space agencies have actually launched tardigrades into space to study them and how they respond to some of the most extreme environments we have access to. Tardigrades have ridden on both the inside and outside of different spacecrafts to test how they stand up to the space environment. I can't believe hundreds of tardigrades got to go to space before I even had a chance to go. So not fair. While some space radiation did have a negative effect, the water bears were fine in the vacuum of space. They're the only creature so far with that claim to fame. So what makes these water bears so tough? It's thanks to their three different phases of living. During their active phase, tardigrades live their normal daily life, eating, growing, and enjoying their lovely wet home. They enter their anoxibiosis phase if they sense their environment is low on oxygen. Almost like a puffer fish, they puff up and float around until they sense things have gone back to normal. The third stage, cryptobiosis, is the wildest one. It allows tardigrades to peace out while things are rough and come back from the verge of death as the environment improves. Cryptobiosis is triggered by a lack of water. Water bears love and need water. It's in their name. So without it, tardigrades enter a sort of hibernation where their metabolism stops. But unlike the hibernation of large mammals like bears, they lose up to 97% of their moisture and shrink even smaller to one third their normal size, where they stay ready to deal with extreme temperatures and pressures until water returns to rehydrate and reboot them on a much better day. They must be anxiously checking their 10-day forecast every morning, just waiting for a good rain. They've gotten so good at adapting that to actually kill off all tardigrades, researchers think Earth's oceans would have to be fully boiled away by something like a supernova or massive asteroid. The intense heat and lack of liquid water could be enough to do it, but it takes a lot of energy to get all the water in our world's oceans at every depth to over water's boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius. Which I think we're all really hoping doesn't happen.
for a few reasons. If you have access to a microscope at your school or local library, you can actually go scouting for tardigrades. For your best chance, go hunting for wet moss in your backyard or a nearby park. Soak a small sample of moss in water for an hour and then put a tiny amount of the water onto a small microscope slide or dish. With a bit of patience and searching, you might be able to spot your first water bear. And by doing so, you'd be in good company. Researchers all over the world are studying tardigrades too and still making big discoveries. Recent studies have looked into how tardigrades are able to deal with high levels of radiation. Results seem to point to proteins that shield water bear genes or bind the genes together to keep them from breaking under radiation. And tardigrades seem exceptionally talented at repairing any damage that radiation causes. This allows them to withstand blasts of ionizing radiation 1,000 times greater than what would kill one of us. By studying how these amazing tiny critters protect themselves from the craziest conditions our world has to offer, we may be able to better protect ourselves in the future here on Earth, and even as we explore out into space. Maybe then the tardigrade astronauts will let me tag along on their next mission to space. Hey, it's Miranda Cosgrove, your favorite host of Mission Unstoppable. I'm the only host. And if you want to watch awesome STEM videos and exclusive Mission Unstoppable clips, just make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell.